I literally just recorded this entire video of an all AMD Hackintosh build wearing an NVIDIA shirt. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you all of the parts inside my new working and very reliable Hackintosh. We'll talk about why others, including myself, like to build Hackintoshes, and then I'll give you some tips on how to build your own. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm gonna to be sharing basically my entire experience with my new Hackintosh build, which we assembled on a Twitch live stream, by the way. Absolutely ridiculous. All right, 50% done. We got that and that. Now all we have to do are these RGB fans. You should totally be following me over there. And then we're just gonna talk about some random Hackintosh things in general. And if you're new here and you wanna see other PC build guides just like this one, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode, but yeah. Let's check this build out. Starting with the parts list for this Hackintosh specifically, the CPU that I decided to go with is a monster Ryzen 7 3700X that's rocking eight cores and 16 threads, which is super beefy and big thanks to Micro Center for sending this one over. I'm sure you guys already know this by now, but Micro Center is the spot to look if you're in the market for a new CPU like this, or even better, a CPU and motherboard combo because they always have the best prices in their stores and I've been going to them for about a decade at this point. I'm kind of mad that I literally just moved even farther away from a micro center. It just doesn't make any sense. But anyways, I will have their links down in the description. Moving to our motherboard, this one was also sent over, this time from ASRock as it's their X570 Steel Legend. And honestly, the only factor that went into me requesting this one was because of its white and black color scheme. There's not many AM4 white motherboards these days, so this was a pretty easy choice. The X570 Steel Legend is, however, rocking some other benefits such as a 10 power phase design with better overclocking support, an integrated IO shield, which we'll talk about a bit later, two M.2 SSD slots, and another M.2 slot for a Wi-Fi chip, which we'll also talk about later, ECC memory support, and even some RGBs. Moving on, we get to the RAM, and this is the typical RAM kit that I've been going with for a lot of my higher end builds. It's the Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB, clocked at 3,200 megahertz, and it's two by eight gigabytes. Below that is our graphics card, and because newer Nvidia cards are pretty much impossible to get working on Hackintoshes, I decided to stick with AMD. This here is the XFX RX 57 700 XT Thick 3 model, which XFX was kind enough to send over. Obviously, the bread and butter advantage of this specific model is the thick cooling triple fan design to go along with its 8GB of GDDR6 VRAM in a boost clock of up to 1980 megahertz. Now, the case is another part that I chose specifically because of the color scheme that I wanted for this Hackintosh build, but it's also performing very well silence-wise, as you would expect because this is the Be Quiet Pure Base 500. The Pure Base 500 is rocking some pretty useful features such as the ability to go with a closed and silent or an open and higher performance top cover. It came with two pre-installed Pure Wing 140 millimeter fans, which perform quite well, but I had to swap them out for some RGBs, of course. And finally, the bread and butter of this Be Quiet case is its noise dampening material. If you're going for more of a silent case, you can get the version without the tempered glass side panel, but I personally put way too much money into this build to look baller, so I gotta show it off. Rounding out this parts list, we have the power supply. This here is the Corsair RM. 750X. This thing is a little baller for you budget builders out there as it's rocking an all white design with even these white cables so I didn't have to go with custom ones. It's fully modular and it's 80 plus gold certified so I don't really feel bad about keeping it running all day. For RGB fans, I decided to go with these Corsair LL120s. These are actually really good RGB fans and they're even white so it would have fit our build perfectly but unfortunately you can only control the colors through the IQ software as there's no physical button. There is a Corsair IQ software for Mac OS, but that can only control peripherals because you shouldn't need to control custom hardware in Mac OS. It's a Hackintosh, so what can you do? So I decided to swap these out for the basic Antec RGB fan kit that I've been going with with a lot of my other builds. This is definitely a good note for those of you looking to build your own Hackintosh build. Be sure to use RGB fans with a physical button because you may not have the support you need to change the colors if it has to be done through software. For storage in my Hackintosh, I actually have a few SSDs in here because I plan on making this a triple boot system with Windows and Linux as well. Make sure you let me know down in the comment section if you want to see that. But for the Mac OS install, I went with 
with one of my favorites again. This is the 480 gigabyte Corsair MP300. And finally, the last part in the parts list is probably my favorite. As you guys know, I've been working with V1 Tech for a couple of projects now, and they make custom GPU backplates and even SSD colors. And I reached out to them and had them make this custom Apple backplate for my 5700 XT. I installed it as soon as I got it in the studio and it looked amazing, but then I realized that with this Steel Legend motherboard, it wouldn't fit because of the IO cutout. Because of that, I ended up just slapping it here on the PSU shroud, and I think it still looks great here. It's about the right height, so I'm not upset about it at all. Do be aware that V1 Tech will cut the back plates however you want. I could have had them cut out the slap for the IO, but like I said, I kind of dig how it's looking on the PSU shroud, so I'm not going to bother changing it. So with that being said, here's what the entire parts list is looking like for my 2020 Hackintosh build. This beast is obviously super overkill and you don't actually need this high of end parts to build one, but I like builds that are going to be in my studio for a long period of time to look nice. With the parts list out of the way, I now want to talk about just my Hackintosh experience in general. This isn't going to be a dedicated tutorial or anything, but I do want to explain how my installation process went. Right now, there's two main methods of installing an AMD Hackintosh, OpenCore and Clover. OpenCore is the new holy grail of Hackintosh installs lately, and I'm sure you've seen a bunch of all AMD Hackintosh build videos pop up on YouTube lately. Some really nice YouTubers like Snazzy Labs have created really high quality tutorials on how to build an all AMD Hackintosh system, but I would recommend staying far away from them for two reasons. The first one is because they quickly become out of date and you should just follow the written guide. And the second reason is a lot of them skip like one or two crucial steps on accident and that can cause you some serious problems like it did me. I absolutely love Snazzy Labs tutorial. He made the entire process seem super simple, but the fact is that he definitely skipped some steps and a lot of other YouTubers do as well. And it's enough to cause your system not to boot sometimes. To be fair, Snazzy Lab specifically references the written OpenCore AMD vanilla guide multiple times and at one point he even says don't watch his video and just read the written guide. I just suckered you into watching this whole video which is way worse than the written install guide. <laughs> and that's exactly what I would recommend because the process of installing an AMD Hackintosh is changing so much these videos just cannot stay up to date and I would recommend staying far away from the videos and just read the written guide. I'll have this link down in the description. It's actually pretty daunting when you first look at it but I promise once you start getting into your flow, it actually reads pretty easily. Skip the videos, just read this once or twice and follow it to a T. Don't skip any steps. Aside from my lengthy installation process, pretty much everything is working on my Hackintosh. I don't have a valid serial key yet, so I can't use iMessage, but I don't think that I want to load iMessage on here. And I also didn't have to find a valid uh, Wi-Fi chip because I run Ethernet down here. Other than that, the main things that I've done with my Hackintosh so far are pretty similar to what I would do with a normal PC of mine. I install my favorite application applications such as Discord, the Adobe Suite, and I even installed some games because the compatibility of games on macOS is actually pretty good these days. And finally, before wrapping up this video, I want to talk about the main reasons why I created a Hackintosh and why others do as well. For me, honestly, I just like tinkering with new things such as operating systems and whatnot, and this is just going to be a project build for me personally. This specific build is actually going to be rocking a triple boot, like I said, of macOS, Windows 10, and a Linux distro. I'm thinking of Pop! OS, so for those of you are interested in cars, this is kind of like a project car for me down here in the studio. Another thing that I really like about Mac OS is just how clean, minimal, and distraction free it is. Unlike Windows, there's never those annoying pop-ups or notifications or mandatory restarts and updates or anything like that. There's no driver issues as well. It just always works and if you leave it for a week and you come back, it's just still working and it's ready to roll for you. There are some other reasons that most people build a Hackintosh for as well, but they don't 
won't really affect me. On the production side, it allows you to jump into a Mac OS product with the ability to customize your hardware. Unlike most Mac products, a Hackintosh allows you to get a Mac Pro-like system for sound or video production at a fraction of the cost. It allows you to use specific software such as Final Cut Pro or GarageBand, and you can also take advantage of the Mac ecosystem like FaceTiming or using iMessage or Dropoff on your computer. And finally, although debatable, Mac OS tends to at least appear to be more secure. Mac OS isn't actually more technically secure than Windows or any other operating system for that matter. It's basically just a numbers game as hackers are gonna target Windows more often than Mac OS. Mac OS users also typically tend to be the type of people who don't go out looking for random downloads and software, they stick to the app store, so yeah, it appears to be more secure depending on how you use it. With that out of the way though, overall, I'm definitely really happy with my new start into the Hackintosh world. I'm honestly more excited that I just have a project PC with pretty high end components in general right now, and I'm excited to see how this build evolves over time. Well, that wraps up my Hackintosh build guide and just a tour around my new project PC. As always, drop a comment down below about what other content you want to see with this PC next. And after that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet. Definitely hit that subscribe button and make sure you're following me over on Twitch because we have yet another PC building live stream coming up very soon.